Hello everyone, welcome back to Blue Cube. Continuing our Adobe Animate tutorials from beginner to advanced level, in this video I'll show you how to animate a tree along with its shadow in a scene when the wind is blowing. The first thing we need to do is import a tree image into Adobe Animate. Of course, besides importing an image, you can also draw the tree manually using the design tools, it makes no difference. In this part, I'll import a PNG image of a tree that I've already prepared. Using the free transform tool, I make the tree a bit smaller. I hold down the shift key while resizing it. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to create a shadow for the tree. Then, I select the zoom tool and zoom in on the stage a little. Now I'll use the asset warp tool, which I explained in lesson 9. When you select this tool and click on the image, it creates a mesh over the picture that allows us to animate it. This tool may put some pressure on your computer. To prevent that, go to the Properties panel under Object, where you can enable or disable the mesh and reduce its density so it runs more smoothly. I click to add a few pins on the tree trunk to keep it fixed so it won't move. Then I add pins to the branches and upper parts of the tree so I can move them around. If you want to delete a pin, just click on it and press delete. I add a few more pins, and that's enough for now. Next, I move to frame 60 and choose insert keyframe. The more frames you add, the slower the tree movement will be. Since tree movement in the wind is slow, I set a higher number of frames. At frame 60, I use the acid warp tool to slightly move the pins to the left to simulate the tree bending under the wind. Then, I right click on the frames and choose Create Classic Tween. I wait a few seconds for the frames to load. If I play from frame 1, we can now see the tree moving. Because there are more frames, the motion looks slower and smoother. To make the tree stay still for a moment after moving, I add another keyframe at frame 65, and another one at frame 120. At this point, I select frame 1, hold down the Alt key, and copy it to frame 120. Again, I right-click on the frames and choose Create Classic Tween. With this, the tree bends to the left with the wind, stays still for a bit, and then returns to its original position. In the Timeline panel, I enable Loop so that the tree's movement repeats continuously. If we play it, the tree keeps moving, pauses a little, and then returns again. You can use the same technique for flowers or any other object you want to animate in your scene. To avoid repeating all these steps each time, I select the tree layer, right-click, and choose Convert Layers to Symbol. I name a tree, select Graphic, and click OK. Now, if I open the Library panel, I can see the tree symbol saved there as a ready-to-use animation. If I create a new layer and delete the tree from the stage, I can still bring it back from the library, and the animation will play exactly the same. To save the file, click on Save As and save it on your computer. Be sure Motion and Object are enabled. Then press Save to store it on your computer. If I now create a new document, open the Asset panel, go to the Custom section, and then into Animated, I can drag this tree animation onto the stage and wait a moment for it to load. Now let's add a shadow for the tree we created. I move the tree a little higher.
Then, in the library panel, I right-click on the tree and choose Duplicate to make a copy. I give it a new name and press OK. I bring the shadow into the stage, it's identical to the tree. I cut it, Ctrl plus X, create a new layer named Shadow, and paste it back, Ctrl plus Shift plus V. I place the shadow under the tree and adjust its anchor point. I rotate it slightly to give it the right look. If the shadow is in the wrong direction compared to the tree movement, we need to fix it. To do that, right click, go to transform, and select flip horizontal. I rotate it again a bit and position it correctly. Now the tree and its shadow move together in sync. To make the shadow look more realistic, I need to change its color and make sure the shadow layer is on top. In the Properties panel, under Color Effects, I click Advanced and set the red, green, and blue values all to minus 100. This darkens the shadow. Then, I reduce the alpha so it's not too strong. Next, under Filters, I add a blur filter and set it around 6 or 7 so the edges look softer and more natural. The shadow's position depends on the sun's location. If the sun is above or to the right, the shadow should change accordingly. You can move or resize the shadow. To refine it further, I use a mask. I create a new layer, select the pen tool, and draw a curved shape over the shadow area. In the end, you must close the shape. Then I use the paint bucket tool to fill the mask shape with color. Finally, I right click on the shadow layer and select mask. Now the shadow is adjusted, and the extra parts are hidden, making it look much more natural. In the end, pressing Ctrl plus Enter lets us preview the final result. The tree moves continuously, and the shadow moves along with it. This technique can be used in many different animations. That brings us to the end of this video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded.